Hi again everybody, it's Dr. Pam Kane coming to you from St. Gregory the Great Parish in Bluffton, South Carolina. And I'm here to do the second installment of my program called Get Organized with Dr. Kane. Today, we are going to be learning about a composer named John Knowles Payne, and you're going to hear his concert variations on the Star Spangled Banner. First things first, I want to tell you a little bit about this composer. Born in 1839 in the state of Maine, he was from a very musical family. His father was a musician and teacher. His uncles were music teachers as well. And his grandfather built the first pipe organ in the state of Maine. At a young age, John Knowles Payne made the decision that he wanted to go to Germany to study music. So he performed in several recitals in order to raise money and get interest in his, in his project of going to Germany. He did do so. And upon returning to the United States after a successful studies, a su successful studies and a concertizing program, he became the first, the first university choir master and organist at Harvard. And he decided as part of his program that he would offer free music appreci appreciation and music theory classes at the university. This actually turned into the very first program of its kind in the United States, the first academic music program, and that he was the first director of the program at Harvard University. After um, he got settled back in the United States, he was promoting the music of America, and he formed a part of a group called the Boston Six. The six musicians with him, including him, five others, Amy Beach, George Chadwick, Arthur Foote, Edward McDowell, and I'm going to take a quick look because I forgot my fifth one. Oh, Horatio Parker. And this group was not an actual institution. They didn't really meet on a regular basis, although some of the men did get together socially. But their purpose was to promote American classical music and they wanted to set themselves apart from their European counterparts who had until this time dominated the classical music world. And they're, they're really their, um, their core um, ideals were from the German romantic style of music and from there they really did their best to promote their American sound. So without further ado I'm going to put on my organ shoes and I'm going to then ask my wonderful cameraman, who is my dear husband, to come around behind me and we will show you what an organ score looks like. And I will explain how I derive the different sounds that I play, keeping in mind that this is a, a theme, so you'll hear the theme of the Star Spangled Banner, followed by variations. There are five variations, and each one has a special color, or a quality that makes it very unique. So, let me have you take a look at what an organ score looks like. Here's the first page of the music. So, what I would look at first as the organist would be right here in the left. The, the composer has asked me to choose specific stops. And we talked last week about the principal stop, which is, and he asked for principal eight foot. And remember, the principal sound is a very unique sound for the organ. It can't be replicated in an orchestra, and it is the primary sound on the organ. So um, this other, um, so here's what I'll do. I'll pull the principal stop on the grate. This is the, the grate manual in the center here. And then he asks for swell to grate. So there's a stop called swell to grate, and I'll explain that in a second. And on um, the swell, this is called the swell manual. The swell manual, he asked for flute eight foot and four foot. So I'm going to pull this eight foot sound here and this four foot flute here. And then what has happened is the sound up here has transferred itself down to the grate. And it's also got that principal eight, so it's got a the sound that he wants. And then he wants me to put a principal 16 foot. So again, if this was a pipe organ, 
the largest pipe in that set of pipes would be 16 feet tall. So the pedal, he wants a 16 foot principle. I'm gonna adapt that a little bit for my, what I think would be actually a good sound. So I'll do, I'll give it a try, 16.8. All right, and then the only other thing I'm gonna do before I uh, start this piece is I'm going to set it on one of these pistons so that when I'm playing, I don't have to do anything except push the button that I want. So I'm gonna set it, here's a set button, and then I'm gonna push that, and I'm gonna set it on number one. I've decided that's the, the level I would like to use for that, the piston. A couple of things, an organist reads a score that has a treble and a bass clef for the most part for your hands, and then this whole line of music is for your feet. So that's what an organ score looks like. I'll turn the page so you can see how the rest of this will play out. Variation one. I've decided to use piston number six, so that's what that means, my, my chicken scratch there. Um, interesting, if you uh, see all these little um, Vs and upside down Vs, this is a, a mark that organists know as being a toe. When, when I'm playing with my feet, I can either use my toe or my heel. So this would be a left toe. That's a right toe, okay? And here the circle represents heel. Heel, heel and toe. So that's the um, first variation of the piece. Uh, the second one, lots of pedal work here. <laughs> Lots of scales, you see all that? Okay. And then the third variation, I like this one a lot because what he does, he puts the melody in the pedal. This is the tune in my feet for the Star Spangled Banner. And he asked for a principal 16-8 and I decided to adapt that a little bit. I'll just show you what I decided to put on. There's a thing called a Roar Shalmai and it's got a really interesting sound. So you'll hear that in the third variation. The fourth variation, he changes this melody, which you know as uh, to minor tonality. So it's got a really dark sound, a really dark sound, and andante, so pretty slow too. Finally, he ends this, uh, these variations with a fuga. Last week you got to hear the Toccata and Fugue in D minor by Bach, and a fugue, for, back, for lack of a better term, is sort of like a round where one voice comes out and then another voice comes with the melody. And it's not technically a round, but the idea is that this little theme comes in and out of, the, um, out of, the, of this piece, and you'll hear it in spots, and then it'll disappear and come back again. Um, and at the very end, this is fun here, if you're ready for that. And then when we get to the very end, he brings back the theme in a very, very grand ending. And I decided to use, watch this, here's piston 10. Watch what comes on for 10. Pretty much everything. All right, uh, so without further ado, let's have you listen to John Knowles Payne's concert variations on the Star Spangled Banner. Thank mm -hmm. you. 